Thank you. Um, it's very appropriate that this little talk of mine should follow a music video of all things about Albert Fish because Albert Fish, they thought, played a part in this little mystery that I um, managed to unravel. And um, if any of you have read any biographies of Fish or seen John's um, documentary, Albert Fish, which I highly recommend, um, you'll know that police suspected Fish of killing many more young children of both sexes and different races than he was actually convicted of. He was convicted of the murder of young Grace Budd and admitted to the murder of a young boy, Billy Gaffney, but he had talked about killing other children and the police suspected that he might have committed numerous other child murders as well. Now, in 1933 and 1934 in Brooklyn, there were a series of um, several assaults on young girls, and among these, this series of crimes were four murders of girls between the ages of five and seven, and police started to suspect that the same person was responsible for all four murders. The press began calling the unknown culprit the Brooklyn Vampire. Uh, maybe we'll go see goes to Brooklyn, sort of. <laughs> anyway, the, um, one of the children who was a victim in this series of crimes was a little English-born girl of six named Barbara Wiles, and she lived with her family, her uh, parents, and her um, young sibling at 161 Himrod Street in Brooklyn. And then very tragically, on the morning of March the 28th, 1933, I don't know what day of the week that was, she was um, found by her mother, who told her to run off and play, that they were going to take her little sibling out in a perambulator for a walk in just a minute. After the, her mother, Barbara's mother dressed her young sibling, she went down to the basement of the apartment house, and to her horror, she found Barbara lying across the baby carriage with a rope around her neck. And the mother screamed and removed the rope from around Barbara's neck. And at first she thought that Barbara was dead and she picked up her child's body, ran screaming upstairs and asked a custodian to call the police and an ambulance. When the rescue team got there, they found that Barbara was still alive, just barely, and that she and they made attempts over the next two hours to revive her. They used up four 90-pound oxygen tanks and injected her heart with adrenaline, but unfortunately she didn't make it. She passed away. And while the police uh, then went on a, as they were wont to do, they went on an arresting binge of everyone on their list of local people who had committed sexual assaults against children, and I imagine they uh, tried to beat a confession, at least out of a few of them, but the crime was never solved, and it's always been assumed by a lot of people and by the cops that Albert Fish killed young Barbara and maybe the other three girls as well. However, however, it in 1950, 17 years later, it turned out that the solution to the crime, and it was publicized in the New York Times, was very, very different. And really, I think the true solution to the crime was much more horrible than if Albert Fish had confessed to killing her and had written another one of his famous, sneering, uh, gory letters describing how he killed her and covered her up and eaten her. In 19, 
50, early in 1950, a policeman who was still working on the case, it was, I guess, in what we would today call their cold case file, uh, went to see uh, Mrs. Wiles, Mrs. Anna Wiles, who was then living on Putnam Avenue in Ridgewood, Queens, and when the detectives, more than one, dropped by for a visit to see how the, uh, if she had anything to tell them and to check into the cold case, she told them an astonishing statement that she had known for the past 16 years who her daughter's killer was and that her daughter had been raped and strangled and murdered by her own grandfather. Yes, you heard me correctly. What happened is, what first aroused Anna Wiles' suspicions was that shortly after, a few days after Barbara was murdered in March of 33, the funeral service for her was held. And as she looked at her murdered and outraged daughter's body lying in her coffin, she noticed on the child's hand, the dead child's hand, a ring that had belonged to her, but that the child had lost when she and her parents were living in Manhattan with their grandparents, that is, with Anna Wiles' parents, Barbara's grandma and grandma. And Barbara and her mom both noticed the ring and they just looked at each other, did a double take, and thought, where on earth did that come from? And then, eventually, um, what happened was, um, Mrs., uh, the grandmother, spoke with the grandfather about the ring, then she advised her daughter, Anna Wiles, to forget about it. But then the next year, 1934, Anna Wiles' mom came to her and said, Honey, your father killed, raped, and killed your daughter, but please, honey, don't tell anything about this until both I and your grandfather are dead, because after all, we don't want to bring shame and embarrassment on our family. And, um, she might well have added, uh, and we don't care if your grandfather commits this crime against other helpless children other than his own granddaughter, but I don't know if that was looked into, but I can't believe that someone who would do that to his own grandchild did not at least try to do it on numerous other occasions to other people's children. And um, eventually, Anna Wiles' mom died, and then in 1949, her grandfather, her father, her daughter's murderer, passed away. And when the police came in early 1950 to check up on her in the case, she told them all, and the case was marked as solved. But this little news item in the back pages of the New York Times was quickly filed away and forgotten. And as far as I know, until several months ago, when I was doing a search, of this topic and looking up each of these murdered girls' as names in the New York Times online, did I find a, um, this article from 1950 revealing the true solution to the case. And I, like I said, I, maybe it's just me, but I think the real solution was, and how it was covered up, was ten times more harm than if she'd been out murdered by Albert Fish or some other perverted stranger who then wrote a gory little missive about it. And uh, I just wanted to uh, speak here tonight and clear up this little tiny fish-related mystery and reveal what really happened. And I, the, what really did happen haunts me. I hope it doesn't haunt you as much as it haunts me, but I felt uh, people interested in the history of the case would want to know about it. So thank you very much for listening to how I rediscovered the forgotten solution to the world history.
I'm a little drunk, but I think I, mostly it was steady. I didn't have to hit save, I hope I didn't shut the window. That's fine.